Welcome back traders. Today we are going to talk a little bit about some overarching macro market data information. We're going to talk a little bit about Nvidia for a short short period of time. Then I'm going to dive into Marathon Digital, a little bit about Bit Digital and CleanSpark today. That's what we're going to cover real quick right now. Let's go. This first page you see here, I am looking at FINRA margin debt versus the S&P 500. So it's a ratio of the debt versus the S&P 500, something I want to point out in relation to our current rally. If you watch this, the red line is the margin debt, the blue line, that is the S&P 500. And something that you will notice here is that when you see a sudden spike in the margin debt, you also see what comes after is usually a pretty big drop. This is the dot-com bubble. This is the great financial recession. The great recession over here is COVID. And then right here is the 2022 drop there. Now, preceding each of those, you see this red line spikes right before the drop again in 2008. I mean, and that happened when in 2007 is when it started and it spiked in like late 2007. And then in 2008, it started bleeding off and fell all the way down. And then in 2021, it did a much less dramatic spike. In fact, it barely met the same heights that it was at in 2018 but it did it really fast you see in march 2020 was the was the 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 smallest amount and then it or the lowest level and then it spiked back up to that level almost immediately by you know the christmas of that year september of that year uh, and then we saw a big drop off right after so and and what i want to point out is it during right now during our current run up right now margin debt is actually very very low this is very very low. In fact, it's looking reminiscent of the aftermath of the uh, dot-com bubble in terms of margin debt versus um, S&P 500 uh, valuations, which uh, says that until we see this red line start to grow at a rapid pace like it has in the past, this rally probably can continue. It might, it might be able to keep going there for a while. So let's keep that in mind. You can also see the raw data for this chart uh, right here. This is on macro micro, by the way. This is the raw data where you can see the raw numbers in relation. So like there's the spike drop off. There's the spike in 2008 drop off, the 2021 spike and the drop off. Get that out of my face. So what I want to see is like a spike in this line here uh, and then a, it to start to taper. And then I'll be like, ooh, maybe the run is over. Um, one thing to keep in mind today, the other big piece of news, all, a lot of the, the Magnificent Seven were down today, including NVIDIA. NVIDIA finally had a day where it was down. It was down 5.5% today. And that is the biggest drop that we've seen on this thing since its initial gap up in 2023 last year from those good earnings when it went from 300 to 400 overnight. This is the biggest drop we've seen a single day uh, since then. We went down $50. We were almost at 1000 and it sold off. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is not super scary. So I'm not too concerned about this. I think this drop might go for another day or two and then start curling back up. And if you want to find out why, it's in the SEC filings. So here we have the NVIDIA Corp SEC filings. And it was the exact same issue that happened to CleanSpark la uh, last week and or earlier this week. Sorry, it's Friday. <laughs> earlier this week, they had some 144s in there and those several of them those were likely sold today at the peak near 1000 on the um on the stock and some of these were for a few hundred thousand shares so it was significant significant selling pressure and they probably sold off most of them as the stock approached that thousand dollar mark so we might see this revert into the low 800s maybe high 700s over the next few trading days and then start to recover so it's not like a fundamental um, failure of the company. It's simply insiders selling large amounts of shares as the stock is skyrocketing. Uh, that's exactly what happened to CleanSpark. And if we look at CleanSpark, it went from that 24 high down to 15. And then we're already recovering in a big, big way. We were up 13 and a half percent today. We we're back over $20. I'm super bullish on uh, CleanSpark. Again, of course, this is not financial advice, nor a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, I'm super bullish on CleanSpark right now. In fact, I had some call options that I had bought on the 28th that went way, way down when it went to 15. And then today they were positive. So I rolled those into a better longer term in the money call option. Um, so I took those profits, rolled them into better calls, in my opinion, what were better calls. Uh, and that's what's going on right there with that. 
So as you can see, I'm very bullish. I actually bought in around like, I, I rolled those calls around $19 and I've got some pretty good movement out of those already, which is very exciting. Uh, so then let's go into Marathon. Marathon actually had an update today. It was up 7.71%. At one point, we were up about 12% got up to the 15 day simple moving average. We are still not out of the woods yet on Mara. The dilution was was rough. I mean, they, they got a shelf offering to dilute by 25%. So, I mean, uh, do I have a tool for that over here? All right, I do have a tool for that. It's the little measurement. Okay, from peak to trough, once that shelf offering came in, and I don't even know if they've diluted us yet or not, but we saw a 36% drop in Marathon from that. Could that be the entirety? of that drop. I don't I don't know exactly. Let's take a look at market cap actually. Marathon's market cap is 6.2 billion. Let's see company's market cap. I want to see it over time. That's how I like to view this thing. Take a look here. Uh, let's go into can I shorten this up at all? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. All right, that's fine. Don't doesn't matter. We're currently actually at 6.28 billion. So we are actually higher than we were on February 16th. Our market cap right now is higher than when Mara was at $30. That's how much they've diluted you in just the last couple of weeks. And that is why I sold a big chunk of my Marathon Digital because I did not like that much dilution. Now, I understand why they did it, and it's for the longevity of the business, but they have significantly hurt my upside. And at this rate, this position here, in, in my opinion, and this is not financial advice or a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever, but my personal opinion is that CleanSpark has a similar um, outlook in terms of future price, in terms of reaching a certain level of price, and it's trading at, uh, you know, $3 less than Mara. So why am I going to buy Mara? And, that's, you know, that just makes sense to me. Uh, anyone that's a bull on Mara, it's not against you. I do, I'm not against you in any way. I do root for Mara. Mara is the biggest one. I, I have invested in Mara. I still have a very small amount of my Mara left. I do feel bullish about it overall. I just feel more bullish about other miners than Mara at this point, considering their decisions. And I did the same thing with BitDigital before, and, I, and when they fixed those issues, I got back in. So, I mean, Mara can redeem itself in my eyes. But we're not out of the woods yet. We are still below this. We're still at the neckline, basically, for this double top. If we were to reverse, like we are on a tightrope with Marathon right now. We are either going to tumble or shoot up, and I don't know which way it's going to go. If they continue to drop shares and dilute, we're going to tumble. If they stop doing that and allow price action to normalize, uh, that's really the, I mean, uh, in relation to Bitcoin, assuming Bitcoin keeps going up, and Bitcoin was super exciting today. I'm very all over the place right now. We were up over $70,000 for a while. Over $70,000. If we go down to the hourly, it was very dramatic when we got there. We did very, so you see these wicks, there's whipsawed all over the place. We got up to 70,146. And within a two hour window, we dropped all the way down. We dropped 4,000. So we did half the drop of last time. Last time we did a $10,000 drop. This time we did a $4,000 drop down to 66,200. And now we're back up to 69,000. Isn't that amazing? We're back above the all time high from the previous cycle again for a third time right now. That's very exciting. Um, so I think this is going to raise all boats. It's going to be the tide that raises all boats with, for us. Uh, let's take a look at BitDigital real quick. BitDigital, they uh, came off the bottom of this megaphone. They did a nice little bounce right here. They came up. That was beautiful. They also had some SEC filings in here. Uh, I just wanted to point out the SC13G. These ones, there's three of them. One's, I don't know what the third one's for, but one's for Invesco and one is for BlackRock. It's basically just stating that they still own uh, a large percentage of the company. In this case, this is the one for Invesco. I'm just going to show you real quick. Scroll. If you scroll down, it shows you how many shares they own currently and how much percent of the company that is. So Invesco owns 8.2% of the company, which is represented by about 7.5 million shares. And they filed that uh, on, um, looks like it was um, February 12th. And then BlackRock filed one yesterday, indicating they also still have the same uh, amount of shares as they did before. Let me go look. You know what? Let's just look at it. We're here. Let's look at it. BlackRock. Yeah, sold shares. So they've got, man, this one looks different. I don't like it. Uh, Silver power, so distributive fairware. So yeah, they, they actually own 
10%. They've increased their position because the last time I checked, they were only uh, they only owned 8.5%. They actually went over the 10% threshold. It's actually very exciting for BitDigital. I didn't, uh, I didn't actually look at this that deeply before. I just saw that it was BlackRock. I was like, okay, they still own a bunch. And then, then I went and looked on the Sage tracker and saw that it said they still own 8 point some odd percent of the company. They've actually increased that by nearly 2% their stake in the company. So that's actually very exciting and very bullish for BitDigital. I'm glad I have my bag. Again, not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. It's simply what I'm doing with my own portfolio based on the information I have at hand. And with that said, please like, comment, and subscribe and have a profitable day.